right, welcome to the third review of the evening. Up this time is a game called Rush Rover. Um, no, this doesn't have anything to do with dogs. Um, the robot in question is a robot. And this game is a 2D top-down shooter game. A uh, twin-stick shooter. Um, in terms of construction, it reminded me a lot of Smash TV. Like, not, not in terms of, like, personality, but it's... Um, very much you go room to room to room, clearing out all the enemies and having boss encounters and all that stuff. Um, let me see. So uh, we were given the PlayStation 4 version of the game. Um, uh, Petty, how much of this did you have you played? Um, I played around a little bit, but I still couldn't get past the first boss. Uh, I've gotten, like, midway through, like, up to third or so boss i mean it's quite difficult uh, um, especially because uh, with the random generation there's a chance you yeah. can't get any decent power-ups before you get to a boss this is true um and like when you hit a boss depends on your uh run um you can hit a couple different bosses like um Granted, a lot of the bosses look the same. Like, they use that same guardian type. Um, but they're, like, there's, like, three of them. And they, like, and they do different things. Like, uh, the mid-level one will shoot out um, shots that will go bullet hell. Like, they'll, mm. they'll break apart into smaller shots. And then, like, the third like the high level one um th that'll follow a uh, fire projectiles that'll bounce off the fucking wall yeah that... i didn't manage to beat him <laughs> or it i guess <laughs> um anyway uh in terms of the plot uh in the universe of rush over intelligent robots and money exploration have spread over and over the known galaxy. After the war of independence against humanity, these highly intelligent and powerful machines are attempting to rule over everything, so they start hacking other robots. You control a clean mining rover, picking up weapons, and rushing to survive. Hence the name. Although, there are there is a time mechanic here. Uh, it's not related to survivability. At least, not overtly. Um... That is to say, like, uh, if you clear out a room in a certain amount of time, you will get a monetary reward. Um, same deal if you beat a room if you don't get hit. Um, and that ties into the power-up system. Uh, there's, a, um, there's an upgrade system. Uh, fairly standard stuff. Upgrade your weapon. Upgrade, your, like, your movement, uh, your durability what have you um and there's like three uh weapons you carry uh there's well your main weapon uh there's your grenade those are shockingly rare like uh i only like i got the those a lot less and then there's your uh probe um that's the orbiting satellite um and it will do things Depending on what you have equipped, like I think, uh, like first you have to find ammo for the thing, and then you can like upgrade that. Like my favorite was the ring shotgun, that did some damage. Um, and yeah, um, very uh, um, randomly generated, uh, not just in terms of what you encounter, but like. In terms of enemies, though, uh, there are uh, literally levels. Like, it'll tell you um, before entering uh, a room what level that is. And, you know, that will determine, you know, not just how many robots you fight, what types. Um, uh, about level three, that's when the, the fuckers start teleporting in. Right. Um... And it's a stand, it's a fairly standard progression curve. Um, 
in terms of the uh, raw gameplay, um, very solid stuff. Uh, you know, works well with with uh, a modern controller. Uh, it's like in terms of like in terms of graphics, uh, they're fine, but uh, honestly, this game's kind of lacking in identity in that realm. I will say one thing about the graphics: if you're playing on console, sometimes the um, like words and symbols can be really small if you're looking at it from a TV. So yeah. something to keep in mind. Yeah, this game is kind of tiny in mm. terms of its uh, character sprites. Um, less uh, like that might be uh, because this game was originally developed for the PC. Um, the console ports are a much more recent affair. Uh, and in uh, other things you can spend your money for as well, getting uh, you know new weapons. Um, there's also two kinds of currency for some reason. Like, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see it in the screen, in the gameplay footage, but like the there's the blue currency... Um, that's more directly tied to your upgrades, and there's the yellow currency, which is, um, that's, uh, that's more tied to this, like, the buying of weapons and other things, like, um, you can buy a new plug-in slot, which allows you to carry a second weapon, if I'm remembering correctly, you know, uh, things like that. And you get them not just by killing enemies, but by blowing up certain objects and, um, you know, uh, co completing challenges. Uh, there is like there is um, another mode in this game, and it's uh, and it also appears in the main game as a mini game, um, and that is dodge mode. Uh, that's when this game goes full bullet hell. Uh, there are like three levels. Bronze, silver, gold, and uh, you know, obvious, you know, increasing difficulty, and the objective depends on the level. Actually, like uh, bronze level, that's survive as long as possible. Uh, like the higher levels, it's more survive for amount of time. Um, and like the mode would entail, is you can't shoot. Uh, you can still um, dash, um, which is really helpful for avoiding bullets. Because you are intangible when you're dashing. Yes. Um, but you you can't shoot. Like, like uh, it's pure dodge, and it, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't like the I didn't like this mode at all because mm. it, it you know it, it just got bullet hell like no matter what level. And, you know, there, like, there were times when I lasted, like, a minute. Uh, other times I lasted, like, like, three seconds, you know. No, other people might like it more. It, it just wasn't to my taste, I suppose. Like, you know, it's a, you know, it's a nice distraction. Um, and, yeah, the, you know, the better you do, the, you, you get rewards for it. Um you know, because you want to be upgrading your stuff um, so it doesn't become irrelevant. Yeah, you can also find blueprints in the levels, which allow you to theoretically um, access these weapons at any time. It, it, they cost money to buy, though. But, you know, it's like if you have 50 let's say work units you can buy that particular you know you can buy the flamethrower if you unlock that particular weapon you know as far as like the other you know like you start out with a machine gun which is okay um well, just okay okay. You upgrade it yeah the basic one kind of sucks it does um you know getting it to like level three it'll be okay there are other weapons there's a lot of other weapons some range to the exceedingly useful like the ninja blades those are really good um to the f profound waste of time f fuck the hunter killer missiles 
hated those. Yeah. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, there's a nice variety. And, but yeah, some weapons are a lot more difficult to use than others. Uh, you know, it's going to, some of it's going to be up to preference, I think. Um, uh, you can, uh, like, yeah, you know, I already talked about the probe thing, but it's not just weapons that you can upgrade or you can get. Like, um, one of the best items in the games is the uh, shield probe. That allows uh, the probe to absorb and reflect a number of bullets. Yeah, that came in real fucking handy. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. You know, but... It, you know, all in all, this is a really solid game. Like, I, I, honestly, I think the biggest thing going against it is it's kind of got a lack of personality. You know, like, like the graphics are kind of bland, as is the music. Yeah. Uh, you know, enemies have a bit more personality, but not, not that much. Yeah, you, you'd well, still see something like this in, like, the 16-bit era. Yeah. Though it wouldn't play it nowhere near this good. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that's the thing. Like, these kind of games, they didn't really work with the systems of the time. And that's not really a graphical thing. That's more, you know, uh, the controllers of the age really couldn't do this kind of gameplay. Uh -huh. Like, like um, Smash TV, uh, once again, like, th that got ported to a whole host of consoles back in the day and you know mm -hmm. some of them worked better than others but you know they really couldn't capture the um proper gameplay you know another one that comes to mind real quickly is akari warriors um i forgot that existed and i'm sad you didn't even remember it <laughs> well yeah i know the N the nes port sucked but the uh arcade version was pretty good like i've actually played both like, the arcade version came with these rotary twin sticks that out for, you know, very rapid movement. Like I said, it was okay, but, you know, this is, like, there's a reason why twin stick shooters really became prevalent in the Xbox 360 era going forward. And they're probably not as prevalent now as they are, as they were, you know, say about 10 years ago. Like, you know, when, ge when Geometry Wars was all the rage still, you know, we can actually do this kind of gameplay these days because I would not recommend playing this game with a keyboard. Oh no. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I guess you can do like, you know, with the mouse, like going to be more accurate, but still I find movements works better. You know, it's like, Aiming was aiming is better with the mouse, but moving is better with a uh, ideally a D pad. But the the analog stick still works. You know, you get a, a better flavor of movement from a uh, modern day controller. And let me see here. Um, so in terms of pricing, uh, yeah, this game is your standard Rodalikia price range, which means uh, five dollars. And I'm pleased to report that the PC version has, you know, it's parity with all that. Um, though the PC version does have a bonus, uh, you, excuse me, you can get the OST for an additional $2 or the deluxe edition for uh, $6, $5.99. Uh, I, you know, it's like, I'm having a hard time remembering the soundtrack. Yeah, I remember it was being okay, but um, kind of speaks to the game in general. Like, I enjoyed my time with it, but it's already kind of rapidly fading from memory. You know, that's not that, that's not necessarily anything bad. Um, like I said, it's a solid game, and it's worth five to seven dollars easily. Um, it's just. It's not, um, and it's better than uh, other twin stick shooters we've reviewed recently. Looking at you, Delta Force. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, you know, like, it's just, yeah, th this is kind of bland in terms of just presentation. You know, once again, it, its actual gameplay is pretty rock solid. Uh, and, you know, e easy recommendation here. Um, Petty, what about you? Where do you stand on Rush Rover? Um, I think it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't say it's, like, the best twin stick you have ever played. Mm -hmm. Honestly, what holds it back for me is the part, you know, having to basically level up your guns and stuff. I could see that. I didn't mind it too much because, you know, it gave you a thing to work towards. Fair. Um, well, at least... You know, I wouldn't mind having a gun that can shoot across the screen to start with and just make it more powerful. Uh, once again, I get that. I, I, I get that. You know, it, I think the issue for me was doing that uh, multiple times. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a game that uh, is good in, like, say, a half an hour, an hour, but um, its repetition is probably going to get to you, you know, if you're doing a con continuous run. But, I, you know, it's, this is definitely a game I liked more than a lot of other um, short-form games that we've reviewed on the show. Uh, no. Uh, and it's definitely one of the better rut alike -like uh handled games in recent memory. Oh, yes. Uh, but, you know, it's always, um, you know, I, I won't say a mixed bag because, once again, we've... It's a common refrain, and this game does kind of suffer from that um, in terms of they, you know, they like very generic games. And while this game has more personality and is definitely a cut, you know, definitely a few cuts above their usual fare, it's, you know, it, it's still very much in their idiom. You know, it, it's impressively how, how much they can hold to that even though that they don't develop the mass the vast majority of these games but you know they do choose what they uh want to work with so um it definitely shows but yeah it's definitely better than uh you know like random heroes yeah to say nothing of like thunderpaw that was just bad uh yeah <laughs> Good God, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, if I were giving a numerical value, like a seven, like, you know, really solid. But, yeah, it's no Renegade Ops or Geometry Wars or, you know, etc. Et Android et cat et Cactus and so on. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, still, you can't, you wouldn't go wrong with this. Especially because. Um, Specifically on PS4, there isn't a whole lot of options. Yeah. I mean, mind you, you can pick this up um, on any major console. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think of it as a Vita version. Like I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, solid game. Uh, so that'll about do it for Rush Rover here. Um, be sure to tune in after the break as we review Night Swap 2.